All righty. Uh, it's 5.50, so uh, I guess I'll get the lightning talk started since I've got all of 10 minutes to give this. Uh, so I'm going to be really fast and hit some buttons. Uh, my name is Andrew Bayer. I work at Cloudera. I'm also on the Jenkins board, blah, blah, blah. I'm here to talk about the Jenkins J Clouds plugin. Um, uh, I'm going to hit some buttons. Oh, why do you do that? All right, I'm going to hit some buttons first. I'm going to launch some builds so I can show you the results because it'll take a few minutes for them to provision. Because the JCloud's plugin is pretty much what it sounds like. It's to provision slaves on cloud providers using the JCloud's library. What is JCloud's? JCloud's is a Java interface for tons of different cloud providers and APIs. Uh, EC2, OpenStack, CloudStack, VMware's vCloud stuff, and way more than I can remember off the top of my head. It's somewhere in the vicinity of 40 to 50 providers, uh, or 30 some high 30s providers and another 15 or 20 APIs. Uh, 1.5.0 just came out uh, this week uh, and is pretty awesome. Um, so you may have used the EC2 plugin to provision slaves on EC2 in the past using the cloud extension point in Jenkins. Um, and that's great if you were just using EC2. But it is utterly useless if you're not using EC2 or I guess Eucalyptus, but I don't know anybody who uses Eucalyptus. Um, so we have the Jenkins J Clouds plugin. Do, do, do. It can do cloud storage. It can, you can publish to a blob store, um, like S3 or uh, cloud files on Rackspace. Uh, you can define clouds to work on, uh, for EC2 uh, with a similar interface for configuration as with the EC2 plugin. Uh, there's bits for specifying hardware ID, image ID. You can specify criteria rather than a specific image to boot up. Um, I don't have a good example of that right here. Uh, oh, yeah, I do. CentOS 6 is what I want for that slave. I don't care what AMI it is, and so I just say that, and it does it. Um, it can work with CloudStack. That's uh, my internal CloudStack uh, instance back at work, uh, and I can provision on that. And you can provision on Rackspace NextGen, so you can have multiple different clouds enabled on a single Jenkins master, which, yeah, most of the time you're not going to run into that. You're not going to need that. But once in a while, when you're someone like, I don't know, the OpenStack build people, you'll need it, and it's handy. So when you run a build, you tie it to a specific, uh, no, a specific label, like here's a, a matrix build that is set up to run on the labels that I attached to instances, to, to uh, cloud templates. So I'm running this one, just a quick proof of concept on each of the four templates that I set up. So that means right now it's a little weird because it actually gets strange in the UI when it has a node with the same name as the label show up. Um, but it's running on, gonna run on each of those four uh, templates. It'll provision an instance and run the job and then the instance will be available for something else. By default, that's how it works. Uh, you can set the retention time so that if it's idle for X amount of time, it will get automatically deleted, um, as well as a max number of instances for each cloud. Uh, so that's, that's doing that. Uh, there's some other, other tweaks you can do that are pretty useful. Like here in the single-use slave, which probably won't actually get around to launching until after this is done. By enabling the single-use slave option, in the build environment after you've installed the JClouds plugin, your, sl your job will only, your, your slave will only be used for one uh, job execution and one job execution only. It'll get marked as, ready, as pending deletion as soon as that job completes, and then we'll get nuked when the chance comes. Um, so that way you can guarantee a pristine build environment for each build. I, I uh, use that in the office for uh, package testing of our CDH packages to make sure that we're installing them on a completely fresh machine, since installation testing is something you really want to make sure that you're starting from scratch. Um, so that's very useful in that context. 
It's probably more of something you want to do with a private cloud than with a public cloud because you could pay a lot of money to do that a lot, but it's useful. Uh, we've got the ability to create a cluster of nodes as part of the build. So if we take a look here, that doesn't look very good, but what's happening there is that we are saying, okay, as part of this build, as, a wrap, as part of this build's environment, so spinning up when we start the build and tearing them down at the end of the build, spin up four instances of a given template, and you can do multiple templates, um, so that we can create a cluster that's temporary just for this job. And then what I'm doing in the shell script there is just proving that I can SSH into any of them and that they're there. So you could use that to spin up a test cluster to test uh, some project and then tear them down at the end. Um, and publish the blob store is you know, like your standard archiving artifacts, except that it'll publish to any blob store, such as, uh, in this case, I'm just using S3, but as I said, you could use Cloud Files or any other blob store provider that's supported by uh, JClouds, and that's pretty large number of them. And so I just specify the file that I want to have uh, uploaded to the bucket, and I check the build output, and it says that it uploaded to the bucket. Uh, I'll check later. It, it's actually there. No, it is there. Um, so again, handy. Um, we're adding more features whenever there's actually a reason to. Uh, the big one that's on the roadmap is uh, node pooling to kind of emulate auto-scaling groups on EC2, to be able to have a pool of pre-provisioned nodes ready for you for the various templates that then would get assigned to Jenkins when you ask for them and replaced in the pool when they get pulled out of there so that you don't have to wait 10 minutes for provisioning, but you'll still get a new slave when you need one. Again, that's probably something that's a better fit for a private cloud where you're not paying by the hour than for a public cloud. Um, uh, the JCloud plugin says that it works with uh, 1457 and later. It'll work with earlier. Um, it's... I think uh, probably about 1450 or later will be just fine. Um, oh wait, oh that's right, I actually did test that on 1447. Uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. Yeah, I showed the configuration. The jobs have mostly finished, I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, provisioning can be slow sometimes, especially on our internal cloud stack setup, because it's, well, not Rackspace or AEC2. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, does anyone have any questions? <laughs>